Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, college coaches and high school and collegiate start, uh, uh, student athletes. We are excited. Um, we are on, on the uh, Spotlight podcast today. Uh, if you're not familiar with us, we are a brand new company uh, based out of Austin, Texas. Uh, Connect Athletics is focused on using technology platforms to help student athletes and college athletes and coaches share their story about how they're using their skills on in their sport to, to transition to a successful career once their sport is over. Um, we are doing this through our technology platform. Uh, this podcast is one of those platforms. Uh, we are interviewing student athletes, former student athletes, and what I call career athletes. And we've got one with us on the show today. Uh, Brian Sokas is the regional VP uh, at Buffalo Wild Wings, who's also one of our sponsors, who's helping us spread uh, the platform to help student athletes across the country and here in the state of Texas. We've also got two other sponsors that I want to shout out. GoEdit Graphics, a graphics company based out of Nebraska uh, that has great software to help uh, high school and college athletic programs uh, do add some graphics to their outbound messaging around player spotlights, schedule changes, or any type of uh, information outbound to their fan base. So I want to shout out to uh, GoEdit Graphics. I also want to thank uh, Epic 24-7. They are a new uh, sports apparel company based out of the Houston area. Stefan Johnson, CEO, and he's as passionate as we are about helping student athletes by creating great sports apparel. They do uh, uniforms, they do jerseys, they do sweats and masks and everything else. So check them out uh, at, at uh, Epic 24-7. But with all that said, let me uh, get in and introduce you to our guest tonight on the podcast. Uh, he's like my brother to me. He's family. We've we've played. We've coached together. Uh, Brian Soltis uh, is the regional uh, VP at Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, he has been very strong in his support of, of student athletes across the country. Uh, him being a former player and a former coach, uh, who is now one of the most successful uh, restaurant uh, entrepreneurs working for Buffalo Wild Wings in the country. So, Brian, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. It's good to see you, brother. I appreciate you having me on. No, I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story. You know, we, we've talked about how passionate we are playing and coaching our kids over the careers in, in baseball and you in hockey. Uh, let, let's just jump right in, Brian. Let's talk about you. You know, you started as a, a baseball player and a hockey player in Nebraska. Tell us uh, about that experience and how it helps you in your day-to-day -day life being a successful VP at Buffalo Wild Wings. Well, I mean, it. you know, when you go back that far, it, it was always great you know, understanding what the values were, right? Um, you know, it's it's interesting when you, when I think back to playing hockey and, and baseball growing up and all sports, but those ended up, as you know, being my brother, that hockey and baseball were the two big ones that I was able to do for, for a few more extra years. And, um, you know, you look at Buffalo Wild Wings, um, where, where I've been for a little over four and a half years now, and our values fit exactly into what I learned as a kid growing up. You know, it's uh, it's community, hustle, fun, spontaneity, sportsmanship. And those are the core values at Buffalo Wild Wings. And what a great place to work that embellishes those in the day to day. Because those are things I learned as an athlete growing up. Those are things I learned as I coached, as you and I coached. Um, um, and it's been outstanding being able to see the growth that we had with the kids that we coached and being able to actually provide a place uh, working for us now, as you know, um, and being able to, uh, you know, I think part of my success uh, that I've had, that I've been blessed with having in my professional career, a lot of it had to do with the coaching that we did. You know, it learned very early on that that kids and athletes learn differently. You know, it's, it's one thing, uh, to listen, it's another thing to actually hear what your players are telling you. And I think when you instill um, that sportsmanship and that family type of atmosphere and understanding that you're part of a team, um, I think it, it, it helped a lot from, you know, growing my team throughout my career in the hospitality business, um, understanding that uh, there's different ways to motivate people, right? Um, but you can't do anything on your own. And it's, it's very important that you have a you that has share values and those same goals and those same aspirations. So being able to help people reach their full potential is always really important to me. Um, and I think we've been able to do that on both ends, whether it was uh, playing as growing up as a kid, um, as a young adult to uh, my professional life now and helping people that maybe come in and start at the low end. Um, maybe they start as a bartender or they're, they're, they're a cook for us or a waitress and then they be, get into management. And, you know, I have some people that I work with every day 
that are former high school college athletes and and you see that you 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 understand that and it's just outstanding you know i i, I love to hear the stories from people that that refer back to one coach they had that made a massive impact on their development um because they took the time to care um but uh i i, I don't think you can put a value on what you learn being in team sports i just don't think that there's actually a value you can put on that and how that helps you as you become a, a father a mother you know a coach um whatever that may be a leader in your community and, and we're pretty passionate about that yeah no that's great feedback you know brian people don't know the story and your full background you're being uh, very gracious here but you know brian <laughs> Uh, was very close to being a member of the, of the U.S. hockey team and represent our country playing hockey back in the day. You know, Brian, talk to us about, you know, back in that day when you were playing in high school and a little bit collegiately. Um, no, none of us ever think about our career, our eligibility to come to an end uh, until it's over. Talk about how the, those experiences have led you to uh, a successful career and what you're doing now. And also talk about, you know, the importance of, you know, how – you know, you as a, as, a, as a VP, hiring people, talk about how companies prefer hiring student athletes because of the understanding of, of teamwork and dealing with adversity and, and, and things like that and how that, 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 that sports life absolutely parallels to being successful in no matter what market or career that you pick out as a student athlete. No, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a good call out. I mean, I, the first couple of things that come to mind other than understanding what it's like to be part of a team dynamic is you'll, in my, my experience anyway, anytime we hire somebody that's, uh, that's been a student athlete, um, one of the things that, that sticks out is their, uh, how disciplined they are. Um, and um, understanding time management. Time management is such a big deal. And when you're when you're juggling going to school and trying to get your degree and um, you know chasing that whatever it might be, as far as long as you're able to be an athlete, um, you know time management's instilled in you because you have a schedule. You know where you need to be. You know what your goals are. Um, and that's all. That's very very important in business. Obviously, there's tasks that need to be you know accomplished and. Uh, you can tell the guys, the, the guys and gals that were student athletes, their time management and their discipline. Um, and then probably the third thing I would add is their passion to be successful um, and, and their competitive spirit and desire that they have. And, and it comes through in whatever line of work they're in. And you and I know people out, out, I know tons of people outside of the hospitality business, as do you, that are extremely successful because they have those disciplines. You know, Brian, you said a great platform. When I, you know, you introduced me to coaching baseball, which I never thought I'd do back in the day. But we coached our sons, and you great, you created this great, not just a team. It wasn't just fun. But the Robert Bulldogs program that you created had specific messages that we had for those kids who are now very successful. Your son, my son, and many of the other players that we coached over the years with Coach Ace. Uh, talk about uh, your mindset and when you put down the, the, the foundation of the Robert Bulldogs, how important it was to not only teach these kids the sport of how to play the game the right way, but to also help them make them successful in life. Talk a little bit about, about that, that foundation you set, and then you two obviously shared with myself and Ace and made a big difference in that, in that baseball program. Um, I'm sorry, you kind of froze up a little bit. I, I didn't hear, I heard the Round Rock Bulldogs and then you froze up. Oh, sorry about that. You say it was me a little weak here, but yeah, I was talking about how you, the foundation that you set for the Bulldog program and, and, and what you wanted to teach as far as not just winning games, we played a lot of good teams. We're talking about just, it's not about winning. It's how you prepare, it's how you play. And more importantly, how people perceive you uh, out when you're game, when you're not playing the game. Uh, talk about that, your thoughts and put together a program like that and how those kids are doing so well now, uh, almost 20 years later uh, at their, in, in life and in sports. Well, I think the biggest thing we instilled in those, those, those boys, those kids at a young age, you know, Daniel and, and Zach and all the rest of them, um, we were going to have fun, but we were always going to be prepared and nobody was ever going to outwork us. Um, we hammered the fundamentals. Um, we were never, we were always going to be the team that was in the best physical condition. We were always going to be the team that um, knew the fundamentals inside and out. Um, and we worked on that, but we had fun doing it. We used, you and I used to joke around. I used to tell you, if any kid quits, stops loving the game of baseball because of you or I, we have failed. Yeah. Um, and so it had to be fun, but it could still be an extremely competitive environment. And then the other thing that I would add, and I think the glue that kept all that together 
um, wasn't you, wasn't me, wasn't Coach Ace. I think it was the family atmosphere that, that we created. Um, and not just the players, but the families, involving the families, the siblings, um, and letting everybody kind of have a say in what it was we were doing. It was a group ethic because we only have the athletes for a certain time on the field. We only have them for, you know, on the practice field or during the games and meetings. But um, we needed to have the support of the families. And I think we were blessed that uh, we had a lot of kids with great families that um, understood that and, and helped when they weren't on the field. The other thing we did, and you remember, if they weren't getting good grades, they weren't playing. <laughs> Even at a young age, I think we were one of the few few select uh, teams or whatever you want to call it back in the travel clubs that um, they had to bring us our their report cards. Remember that back in the day? Um, because we told them that's the most important thing. You, you, you may play baseball for 10 years in the major leagues. Eventually, you're going to do something else, and school's the most important thing. And um, so I, I thought that it was all encompassing because we tried to create not just not just great baseball players, but but great kids that would become great young men and become great fathers and become great husbands. And, um, you know, it's just so exciting. I know you are as excited as I am now. They're 25, 26 years old and how successful they are. They're getting married. They're having kids. And um, if you and I played a small part in that, that's just awesome. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And it made a big impact on myself as a coach. And, you know, you and I talk about every day how uh, as coaches and as people, we're constantly a work in progress. We're trying to get better every day. Uh, there's, there is no end game. There is no finish line. Uh, every day we're trying to be the best version of ourselves for the next day. So I definitely live and still live a lot of those bulldog principles that you instilled in the kids, uh, to myself uh, and to all the families involved. Brian, as we finish up here, and let's go, I know you've got a busy schedule today, but you know, the thing I love talking to athletes about is life after your sport. Um, you, know, uh, you know, a lot of players, they, they play their sport, whether it's football, hockey, baseball for so long, they think that that's the only thing they can do. And you've heard me tell people, tell these uh, student athletes at my camps, you are more than your sport. Your sport is your output now, but your output's gonna change. And guess what? The things that made you a great athlete will make you a great regional VP or whatever one day down the road. Talk to us about your thought on how players need to start preparing for life after their eligibility in their sport is over to stay successful in life. Well, I think it, 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 it quite simply is some of the things that, that you and I have talked about is they have to keep those same disciplines, right? Um, you know, um, their dedication, you know, they have to be prepared. Um, and and as, as, as a student athlete and you're going up through your career, you know what interests you, you know what it is you might want to do. You need to not put that completely on the back burner. You need to be able to have that, that plan for what it is you're going to do once your playing days are over. Um, and I can't harp more on making sure that you get a great education because that will continue to open doors for you as you continue to move through your career. Um, and those those disciplines and those values that you learn as an athlete, whether you're a nine year bulldog or you're you know a senior playing for ASU and about to get drafted, those things come through. And uh, not just coaches and recruiters, they're not the only people that are looking at that looked at that same way in the business world in your professional career because those things are just as important as they were when you were on whatever field it was you were chasing yeah hey as we finish up here brian you know for those who don't know brian you know, his two children zach and reagan uh, my godchildren uh one is a full graduate from ou doing very well in oklahoma right now and reagan is just finishing graduating from alabama uh, and already going to start her career tell these parents right now not the, not the student athletes but tell the parents what what recipe that you and Joanna use, your wife, uh, to, to successfully manage get your kids uh, through the transition of high school into college, even though they weren't playing their sports in college, but managing still graduating at a very high level, and then that transition from high school to college and then into a major career. What what what, what would you tell parents who want those same things for their children? Um, you know, as you know, they're your god kids. Um, they're very very competitive, and that competitiveness didn't happen by accident. I think that sports provided that for them. Um, and they understood what working hard, what kind of results working hard could produce. Um, and, you know, everybody likes to win, um, but it's it's more than 110% all the time. And whether you're competing on a volleyball court or an ice rink or baseball or football field, whatever it might be, they they took that we, we made sure they understood that was just as important to be competing in the classroom yeah. uh, 
because at the end of the day, that was going to be the most important thing. And I, I, I firmly believe with all of my heart that the, both of them playing the sports that you know that they played um, you know, through high school absolutely helped them with that discipline to, be, to remain competitive in the classroom. Um, and to have those same disciplines as far as that work ethic and that time management. Um, yeah, we always want to have fun, but we also have a job to do. And we also have goals. Setting goals was always the most important thing in our household. Um, and we talked about it every year, what those goals were. And not it's, it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to put it down on paper because um, otherwise a goal is just an idea. But when you put it on paper and you have a deadline for attainment, um, it becomes a real, it becomes real, right? And you got to have some, uh, you know, benchmarks along the way to see if you're progressing towards that goal. And if you're not, as a parent, I think it's, it's our job to kind of help them uh, get back on track a little bit, you know, um, and, uh, and just always supporting them. You know, we were always with the Bulldogs and with the kids, you're never out of it, man. It's never over. The glass is always half full. Don't ever, ever, ever give up. Um, and um, I think instilling that um, in them, I, I'm extremely proud of, of, of the kids. I'm extremely proud of your kids, um, um, that I'm blessed with being their godparents and just all the success that they've had. It's just great to sit back and, and understand that maybe we had a little bit to do with that because we were, as parents and coaches, we were present. And that's the last thing I'd end with is being present. Yeah. There's no more important than being there for your kids um, and being able to be present and being able to help them and being able to not just listen to them but hear what 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 it is they're telling you and that's I'd probably end with that brother yeah now Brian appreciate your time I know you're busy great nuggets of information for these student athletes and, and for those that are interested in saying hey you know what I've, I've been to Buffalo Wild Wings or I've been to other restaurants I love being in a sports bar you know, having a career there is something you might want to think about. And so uh, if you want, if you're interested in maybe find out, well, how do I become a regional VP at a Buffalo Wild Wings? Uh, hit me up on Twitter and I'll definitely connect with Brian. We're always, we're still every day trying to help student athletes and pay it forward to that next generation student athletes to, uh, to have a successful career once the sport is over. Brian, thank you for your time. Thank you for thank you. Buffalo Wild Wings to student athletes across the country. And we look forward to uh, hearing more from you as we move into next year going forward. Thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care.